Hey there! If you've come to hear me talk about a movie adaptation of a classic speed-based platformer about a porcupine, I hate to break it to you, man. You're close, but you're in the wrong place. Sonic the Hedgehog. We all wish we were half as radical as this guy. The 1991 Sega Genesis game bragged how too cool for school it was and quickly grew into a cultural phenomenon spanning multiple generations. A series beloved by many, with almost just as many good titles as there are bad ones. I kid, I kid, I love this series a lot. I grew up playing a ton of the modern and classic Sonic games on the Xbox 360. That's right, I was a nine-year-old constantly playing Sonic Adventure in 2011. That's not how time works. The series just reached its 30th anniversary last year. 30 years of pure, unadulterated hedgehog. Over all that time, the franchise has made quite the reputation. The last, like, 10 years, however, have been incredibly rough for that aforementioned reputation. After Sonic Generations released in 2011, it seemed like Sonic Team didn't know what they wanted the series to be anymore. They released quite a few games with differing gameplay styles and story tones that just didn't stick, with quality ranging from meh to Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. The standout game was Sonic Mania, which was great, but it wasn't even made by Sonic Team. It was made by fans that Sega hired. Sonic Team essentially had no hand in making the best Sonic game in 10 years. That would be hilarious if it weren't kinda sad. Essentially, Sonic fans were craving something new and something really, really good. Something that could turn the tides for the Sonic franchise. So what would that turn out to be? Certainly not a game made by Sonic Team, of course, no, a movie! A film adaptation of the Sonic franchise that released February 2020, right before the world ended, aptly titled Sonic the Hedgehog. And this movie has one of the most fascinating stories of production I have ever seen. A story of how it almost got thrown into the pile of bad Sonic 2010's content, but against all odds turned itself into one of the franchise's biggest successes. And somehow, it seems that most who saw this movie don't know how this happened. Or more importantly, what came before this? Something truly incredible happened to this film, and I think it's about time more people knew about it. So here I am to bring you a cohesive and easily digestible five-part recap of the whole escapade. This is the story of the Sonic movie redesign. Buckle up, because I'm about to say the word Sonic and Hedgehog more times than anyone should in a single day. Okay, first, a bit of background. It all started in ye old days of 2013 when Sony Pictures acquired the rights to make a Sonic the Hedgehog feature film. Said to be produced by Neil H. Moritz, who produced the Fast and Furious series, and Tim Miller, who directed the Deadpool movies. Also on the film was director Jeff Fowler and writers Pat Casey and Josh Miller. They're unrelated Millers. Said to be a live-action CGI hybrid movie in collaboration with Marza Animation Planet, a Japan-based animation studio. They're known best for their work creating CGI cutscenes, intros, and trailers for various Sonic games starting in the mid-2000s, most notable of which being the Sonic Unleashed opening cutscene. Every Sonic fan ever loves the hell out of this thing, so Marza contributing to this movie was a pretty good sign right off the bat. They were getting the right people for the job here. Tim Miller's production company, Blur Studios, was also on the project, who also made some cutscenes and trailers for Sonic games in the past. Specifically, Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic 06. Yep, the quality of these games aside, the CGI was actually still pretty nice, so we're good. The Sony Pictures Sonic movie then proceeded to not happen for like four years until they decided they didn't want to do it anymore. So in 2017, they threw the rights to Paramount Pictures with all names attached to the project following, and from there, the movie actually did begin to happen this time. It was to star James Marsden, also known as Not Paul Rudd, as Green Hills Sheriff Tom Wachowski, Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, I don't know how that happened either, and Ben Schwartz as the Blue Blur himself. Things were looking pretty good up to this point, though the one thing people were kind of concerned about near the beginning was how Sonic was going to look. 
After all, this is a live-action CGI hybrid film, and past examples of these have had really strange and sometimes off-putting designs for their titular characters. But hey, writer Pat Casey ensured in an interview that while he'd have a new design, Sonic would still look like Sonic, just a little more realistic. So we're probably in the clear, right? Right? <laughs> On December 10th, 2018, the first poster for the movie was revealed. Ah! Oh my god! Okay, that's happening. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. So, let's discuss the state we're in. The poster showed a brand new design for Sonic with some incredibly... Interesting changes. Okay, let's go over what happened here. His overall body shape was completely different, oddly based on human anatomy, with human-like and really defined and muscly arms and legs. His gloves were entirely removed, leaving bare hands, and his iconic shoes were replaced with bland and strangely reflective red sneakers, and no socks for some reason. Gross. Pretty much the only things that seemed familiar at this point were the spikes, the color blue, and... Hedgehog. His face, among other details, were unseen in shadows, as they wanted to reveal it later, which took five months to happen. We were left with this for five months! Fans were not happy, if you'd believe it. This new interpretation of Sonic was wildly unusual, was displeasing to look at for most, and was disappointing for just about everyone. However, I decided to be optimistic about this new look. I thought, sure, he looks a little weird, but maybe the pose and lighting is making him look worse than than he actually is. Maybe when we see his face in the trailer, it'll look better. Yeah. Oh, how naive I was. The trailer was released on April 30th, 2019, and... Gotta go fast. Oh, no. SFPD! Uh, meow? It was bad. The design was still bad. Oh my god, what happened here? Okay, just like the first poster, I'm gonna go over what went wrong here. First of all, almost nothing had improved from last time. He was still so weirdly human-like and his now-revealed face looked... Terrifying! Especially the mouth. He had these lips and human teeth that just didn't look right. As well as the eyes just being way too small and way too far apart. The entire face was just really strange looking. Certainly didn't look like Sonic. His range of emotion was also pretty much non-existent. It can be very difficult to make out any emotion in these facial animations sometimes. Which is a massive issue because a lot of Sonic's appeal has to do with his radical, off-the-walls, too cool for school personality. Dare I say it, the amount of cool here does not contradict the concept of school. His proportions were also still a problem, looking way too human for comfort. I think they were trying to give him a body that would suit an athlete, which does kind of make sense on paper, but ugh, it ended up looking really off-putting in execution. Though his shoes were actually different from the original poster, instead of the bland and shiny shoes from last time, he wore Puma running shoes as part of an advertisement. Plus, he actually had socks this time. That's something. You know, not great, but better, kind of. You know, silver linings. Though, somehow, the thing that confuses me, confounds me, confuddles me the most about this design is how they handled Sonic's hands. See, they completely removed his gloves and then made the color of the fur on his hands white to resemble the gloves he usually has? Why not just give him gloves? Why would you go through the effort of making it look like he's wearing gloves instead of just giving him gloves? No other part of his body usually has white fur, so they made the fur on his chest white to compensate, and that also just looks wrong. That makes no sense! They just look gross. You can see his furry fingernails, and in most shots, they look like weird monkey hands. Would giving him gloves really not be realistic enough? Oh yeah, a hedgehog wearing shoes is fine, but gloves? Nah, that is where I draw the line! Puma racing gloves literally exist. It could have worked with the advertisement. 
Moving on, the animation quality was also not the best, kinda floaty with bland and boring poses, just nothing to write home about, which was especially surprising to see considering Marza Animation Planet was on the project. Y you know, the Sonic Unleashed guys. Well that was disappointing, though not exactly surprising, I imagine the proportions of this design made more dynamic poses difficult. He was also very small, about the size of like a large dog, which makes sense, but again, with the adult human proportions. It made him standing next to actual people look really strange, like a tiny blue furry man. It's, it's very uncomfortable. Though imagining it now, I suppose him being larger wouldn't exactly be better at all. To sum it up, the main issue with this design is that they tried to make Sonic look realistic to fit in the real world surroundings, but not just in realistically rendered fur and quills, but in realistic anatomy and proportions, like he could actually be a creature that exists in the real world. So to achieve this, they made him more and more human-like, because humans can exist in the real world, so for this to believably exist in the real world, it needs to look more like a human. That's the logic they were working with. It was either make him look more like a human or make him look more like an animal, which, let's be honest, would have ended with him looking like an Alvin and the Chipmunks character. Okay, the point is, they wanted to make Sonic as realistic as possible. In doing this, they didn't focus on making him appealing at the same time. They were too focused on the logistics of it rather than just making him nice to look at. I respect the attempt, an approach like this is experimental and interesting in concept, but Sonic simply doesn't work as a strictly realistic character. So now, I'm sure you're asking me, why did this happen? I don't know. It's unknown why this happened, who thought it was a good idea, or why I'm having to look at it right now, but if you want speculation, I assume this decision was made by executives that thought they knew better than the actual professional designers and animators, wanting it to be more like other successful live-action CGI hybrid films, regardless of the quality. Something that went along the lines of, Hey, see this? And these? Do that! I'm telling you, the industry professionals that had to go through the blunders of modeling and animating this monster were not happy about delicately detailing its teeth. Anyway, onto the topic of the trailer itself. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, the design for Sonic and his animations were bad, but I liked just about everything else. The casting was great, the story so far was basic, but fun, the jokes were kind of funny, and Jim Carrey was Jim Carrey. That's all I need from him. I was actually genuinely excited. We were getting a Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I love Sonic the Hedgehog. I didn't want the design to ruin what would otherwise be a pretty fun movie, so I tried to see the good in it, which kind of worked for the most part. It Kind of. You know, it worked as much as complete and utter denial can work. But of course, absolutely nobody else did that. Oh, okay. Oh my god, ew! 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 Oh my god! Oh my god, it's so ugly! <laughs> what are those teeth? Why is he wearing melted dentures? What is this face? Oh, and there's his horrible hands and horrible legs. Oh my god. Oh no! Blah! No, don't stretch. Don't make it worse. Stretching compounds the issue. That is not Sonic. Those are the creepiest human teeth to be added to a burring shrew <laughs> since Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> Did they do it on purpose? I've been seeing this motherfucker all over the internet. And now he's haunting me. The legs get me. The freaking legs are human legs. Can you remember when Sonic wasn't the ugliest thing on the planet? <laughs> good times, good times. Ch cheers to those times. This design was absolutely trashed by the internet. No one liked it. Without exception, no one was okay with this. If you asked me in 2019, I would say it's not that bad. I would be lying. The backlash was universal and immense. Everyone was upset at this, and everyone was expressing it. Half of them were sad and disappointed that a Sonic the Hedgehog movie had to turn out this way. And of course, the other half found it hilarious. The memes, oh my 
god, the memes. Okay, side note, I really wish I could share some examples of Twitter and social media outrage when this all went down, but it was almost three years ago now, and I can find very little of it nowadays, so just take my word for it. I was there, and it was a mess. And so, as the tale goes, this trailer swiftly destroyed any positive reputation the movie had left, especially when there was very little of it to begin with. <sighs> yep. Great day to be a Sonic fan. I was pretty bummed that this movie would probably be bashed relentlessly at release, all because of a less than ideal design. Uh, not to say it wouldn't be entirely warranted, though. Ugh. It just sucks to see this character I love always get the short end of the stick in the public eye. Despite that, I was still excited for the movie, and I wasn't about to let a bad design choice change that. But deep down, I knew this was not going to be the success the Sonic series needed. And that is where this story could have ended. The movie could have been released in November 2019, probably receiving poor reviews for it being a decent story that's ultimately dragged down by an unsightly main character. Sonic fans would probably get as much fun out of it as they could, but ultimately see it as a massive wasted opportunity. It probably would have made a little money, what with its $90 million budget, but not nearly enough to be called a thrilling success by any means. Certainly not enough for a sequel or any kind of future. It would come out, people would talk about how bad Sonic looks, and then it would fade into obscurity. Paramount could have just released this movie, made their profit, and that would have been it. Well, that would have been sad. Good thing none of that happened. A mere three days after the trailer released, director Jeff Fowler made an announcement on Twitter. Thank you for the support and the criticism. The message is loud and clear. You aren't happy with the design and you want changes. It's going to happen. Everyone at Paramount and Sega are fully committed to making this character the best he can be. Hashtag Sonic Movie, hashtag gotta fix fast. In a completely unprecedented move, Paramount made the choice to go back and improve Sonic's design for the movie. That isn't a thing that happens, just halting production of a film six months out from release to completely redesign the main character based on public criticisms? That is insane! That is still insane! It's been like two years since this happened and I still can't believe it. The biggest possible props to Jeff Fowler and Paramount for owning up to their mistakes and making this call. It really showed how much they actually cared about the film and doing the character justice. The internet was surprised and, for the most part, cautiously optimistic about this, though it was clear Paramount really had to bring their A-game if they wanted to make up for the manhog. A few weeks later, Fowler announced that they were taking some extra time to make the redesign, so they delayed the movie by four months. Instead of November 8th, 2019, the movie would release on February 14th, 2020, to which everyone on the planet unanimously responded, understandable. As far as I was concerned, I couldn't care less about how long it took, as long as the artists and animators having to go back and redo what they had already done weren't being overworked, and that it didn't come out looking like they must have gotten to work immediately because along with the delay announcement was the first peek at Sonic's redesign, shown here, and oh my god, it looks so much better already. You can instantly notice improvements, like his proportions being altered to be a bit cartoonier with skinny arms and big hands, and to everyone's delight and relief, he's got his gloves back. Thank god. Now, what made me so excited about this image? Well, other than the already blatant improvements. Taking a good look at it, the painting style for this art was incredibly similar to the work of Tyson Hess. Tyson Hess is an artist, graphic novel illustrator, animator, and director who, at the time, was best known for... <gasps> his work on the Archie Sonic comics, including various cover arts and the Sonic Mega Drive limited series, his work on the Sonic IDW comics with some more cover arts, as well as doing some major character designs, specifically Tangle the Lemur and Rough and Tumble, also his work as as director of some promotional animation for Sonic Mania and as the director of the notoriously delightful Sonic Mania opening cutscene, his work as director on the incredibly successful Sonic Mania Adventures animated series as well as a Christmas special, and as the director of the Sonic Team Racing Overdrive animated series. <gasps> <coughs> yeah. 
This guy's worked with this hedgehog quite a bit. Just looking at his work and experience, you know Hess understands the visuals of Sonic better than anyone. So if this image was drawn by him and he's involved with Sonic's redesign, that could mean very good things. But for now, all we could do was wait. And wait we did. It, uh, it actually, like, took quite a while. Like, um, it was like a good few months before we saw anything else. Which is, you know, understandable. This stuff takes a while, but, um. Yeah. <clears throat> Hey, while we wait, here's a fun fact. As far as I can tell, the only other time something like this redesign has ever happened was the 2017 kids movie Monster Trucks, also a Paramount film. It was about big tentacle monsters that went into cars and controlled them from the inside, hence Monster Trucks. Not a bad idea, but apparently the original designs for these monsters were far too scary for its intended audience. Children, meet Creech. Aw, look at him. Little Billy's gonna love this guy. Halfway through production of Monster trucks, they packed a ton of kids and parents into a theater for a test screening to get feedback. And feedback sure is what they got. As soon as the monsters showed up on screen, the poor kids were absolutely horrified. A ton of screaming and crying and angry parents, oh my god. Apparently half of the audience left during the screening. As far as test screenings go, I'd say this was very informative. They then delayed the movie by a whole year and changed the monsters into these much cuter dolphin jellyfish looking things. Sure didn't save the movie, though. What were you talking about? Oh, yeah, hedgehogs. Is that new one done yet? Oh, sweet. About six months later, the new trailer for the Sonic movie, with the new redesign, was released on November 12th, 2019, and, well, I'll let you judge. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. Uh... Ah! Comeback of the century right here. Who wants a comparison? Before? Uh... Meow? After. Uh... Meow? Ah! Night and day, look at this! Now, I don't really have to explain why this is better, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Welcome to a brand new segment I like to call Omega Watt stands in front of a chalkboard and explains why one anthropomorphic blue hedgehog is better than the other anthropomorphic blue hedgehog. Rest assured, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I have 12 PhDs, and they all stand for professional hedgehog design. Also, I actually do have some light personal experience in character design, if that means anything. Alright, let's get started. First of all, the overall body shape has been completely redone, doing away with any resemblance to human anatomy, now with a bean-shaped body, skinny arms and legs, and large hands and feet. These new proportions allow much more dynamic poses and body language, which is very important when it comes to Sonic and his overall style and attitude. Along with this, his face has also been completely redone. His mouth is a lot wider, and his eyes are much bigger, allowing more dynamic movements, and of course looking much more like the Sonic we already know and love. His facial animations are now incredibly expressive, an area in which the old design especially faltered. The amount of personality this design radiates at all times is so nice, now being able to go from adorable to badass in a split second. You can see they tried really hard to make his face cute, readable, recognizable, and again expressive. Just watching this character do stuff is fun. They knocked it out of the park with communicating this character. As previously stated, he has his gloves back, with some really nice extra detail, actually. You could see the seams of the fabric, as well as this really nice looking fuzzy texture. You could tell they really wanted to get his hands right this time, and so they did. His shoes have also been updated, now a more modern take on his classic red shoes, with the white stripe and baggy socks intact. I did some research, turns out these shoes are real products that existed way before the movie did. They are Puma Woman's Dare trainers, and they just so happen to look like Sonic shoes when colored red. Why they didn't go with these in the first place is beyond me, but, you know, 
that could be said about most of this. His size wasn't altered at all, as far as I can tell, but it looks much more natural with the new look, so it didn't really need to change. It's the only thing that didn't change, really. Another thing that I really appreciate about this design is even though he now looks much more like the Sonic we already know, he seems noticeably more childlike than usual. His overall proportions and facial expressions look a bit younger than the design they use for the games, and definitely a lot more than the first movie design. This not only gives this take on Sonic its own identity, but also fits with Sonic's characterization in the film. He's a kid, and he definitely acts like it. I think it adds a lot to the character that would have been completely lost with the old design. Now, possibly the most important factor here is that they completely dropped the attempt at realism. This doesn't look like a creature that could exist in the real world, and they realized that was okay. Removing this restraint allowed them to make an insanely likable character design that's faithful to the games and just nice to look at. Heck, I'll even say this design is better than what they're using for the video games nowadays. I'm sure plenty of fans would burn me at the stake for that take, but meh, I'm a sucker for modernized designs. This just looks nice. The question rises, who was responsible for this? Turns out, I was right. Tyson Hess was invited onto the movie to direct Sonic's redesign. He worked with the CGI team in a few different studios through making Sonic's new look, and the outcome was fantastic. Not much about the process of actually making it is known, though. I, for one, would love to see a detailed documentary about the actual process of making the design from the artist's point of view. Maybe someday. It was time for the leap of faith. I went to the internet to see what others thought about the new trailer, preparing for the worst, and to my surprise, people seemed to really like it. Okay, here we go. Green Hill! Is this even the same movie?! Oh, he's allowed to say handsome package now because he's cute. But bro, look at how good he looks. Package. Oh, that's On beautiful. Oh, he looks exactly like him. They did a good job. They did a good job. Oh, he's so cute. Oh my God. Okay, he's really cute. This looks like I want to see this now, bro. This looks so good already. He looks so good! It's so different! He actually looks cute, like, not gonna lie. He looks really cute. He's not hideous anymore! Look at him! Look at his face! Oh my god, this is Sonic right here. Why is he holding a ring? Now I'm curious! Oh my god, I'm so- Okay, whoa. I'm excited to see this movie now. What? What happened? Wow, guys. Good job. The reception to this trailer was overwhelmingly positive. People were surprised and incredibly impressed. What once looked like another failed video game movie now looked like a genuinely fun time with a beloved main character. People were actually excited to see this movie, and many wanted to see it purely out of respect for Paramount and the animation team for pulling this redesign off. All it takes is a little makeover, I suppose. Or maybe the fact that it was an overall better structured trailer that didn't use Gangsta's Paradise as a background track for some reason. Still though, redesign probably helped. Alright, there's one more thing I'd briefly like to mention before moving on. A lot of people like to think that this redesign was a hoax! Yes, that the design we have now was always what they were going to use, and the footage in the first trailer was faked, made to be intentionally bad looking to gather attention, to then claim they were going to redesign it all for the public praise. SPOILER ALERT! No, it's not a hoax. It wasn't a publicity stunt or something. There are toys for this film that were made before the redesign happened that were released after the movie, still with the old and bad design. If they really had the good design the whole time, then they definitely would have used it for this merchandise instead of their hoax magic trick dummy. This story is legit, conspiracy theorists. Just wanted that out of the way. Moving on. The movie was finally released in February 2020, and it turned out pretty great. Not exactly cinematic gold, but a fun time for the common moviegoer and a real treat for Sonic fans. I'm not sure a movie's quality and reputation has ever done a complete 180 like this. It's quite the success story. The difference between this film and other video game adaptations was clear. The people making this film really cared about what they were working with, and it shows. It quickly grew to become the highest grossing video game adaptation 
animation movie in the US with $306.8 million in box office, which is especially impressive considering it was only in theaters for a month before the plague fell upon the earth. I'd like to see you do that, Mario. I definitely don't think the movie would have done this well if it kept the old design, because visual design, especially for a main character, is incredibly important in creating interest for a film. Because what would you rather see, a movie with this as its protagonist or this? Yeah, I don't think nearly as many people would have wanted to see this for an hour and 39 minutes. Anyway, booming success you say? You know what that means? Paramount executives sure do! <laughs> I'd be more surprised if this didn't end up happening. The sequel to the Sonic movie, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, is coming in about a week from the time of this video's upload, and it looks fantastic. Here's something fun I like to do. December 10th, 2018, December 8th, 2021. The increase in quality here is like whiplash. Look how far we've come. Looks like it's got a lot more action and general Sonic-y stuff than the first one did. It's got Tails, the Master Emerald, Labyrinth Zone, Ice Cap Zone, Angel Island, the Tornado, and over the top game accurate Eggman, and here I come, rougher than the rest of them, the best of them, tougher than leather, sneaker coming knuckles, unlike Sonic, I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex my muscles. And for good measure, Tyson Hess is back as character design lead and as a storyboard supervisor for the sequel, the absolute legend. I am so, so, so excited to see. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Future Omegawatt, from the future, or past, or something, I don't know. As I was editing this video, a sudden and incredibly relevant news bombshell was dropped on me, so here I am roping it in. Okay, ahem! Ahead of Sonic 2's release, Paramount has already greenlit a third Sonic movie and a Paramount Plus original Knuckles TV show for 2023, expanding what is now intended to be a Sonic movie cinematic universe. Whoa! This is nuts, and it tells me two things. Thing number one, all of this absolutely would not have been able to happen if it weren't for the redesign. Without it, the first movie would not have been nearly as big a success to warrant two more movies and a TV show, so bravo to Tyson Hess, Jeff Fowler, and everyone else at Paramount, Marza, and Blur that contributed to making the redesign possible and securing a continuous growing cinematic universe. And thing number two, this means that Sonic 2 might be really really good. Like, they're so confident in this movie being a success that they've already greenlit a third movie and a TV show before the sequel even released. You don't invest that hard for any subpar movie. Unless you're Avatar. This, and everything we've seen so far, kind of makes me expect to be blown away here. Get excited, people. Alright, this has been fun, but I gotta get back to the future or something and let past Omega Watt continue. Oh, I've always wanted to do this. Reality is an illusion, the universe is a hologram, buy gold, bye! <laughs> Let's see this movie. Huh? That was weird. What was I saying? Oh, right, right, I really am excited to see the sequel, but what cannot be understated is how the success of this first movie has affected the game series. You see, ever since Sonic Colors, new Sonic games have mostly been budget titles. Sonic 06 was a complete failure, and while Sonic Unleashed sold well, its reviews and general widespread opinions were very negative, mostly because of its predecessor and the inherently silly concept of the Werehog. So from there, it seems Sega really started to lose faith in the series. They stopped giving Sonic games a AAA titles budget and completely shifted the target demographic to very young children. And I think this is a big reason why the last 10 or so years of Sonic games have been mediocre or just straight up bad. The faith in its success just wasn't there, and neither was the money or the effort. And then the movie happened. The movie was a commercial and critical success, and this heavily boosted Sonic game sales. Look at these juicy numbers. The movie has made Sonic as a franchise relevant and successful again. So finally, Sega saw this response and realized it was about time they took Sonic games seriously again.
Sonic Frontiers. At last, a brand new next-gen AAA big budget Sonic game. A huge open world adventure meant to mark a new beginning for the Sonic series. And it looks good. Good. This is Sonic Team's chance to redeem the Sonic game series for years of mediocrity and disappointment, and I really think they can pull it off this time. I don't think this game, at least with this amount of quality, could have happened without the movie's success, and I don't believe that success could have happened without the redesign. Not only has this redesign saved the movies, it might have just scored this entire franchise a promising future. It's great to see things work out in the end. Moral of the story? Uh, I don't know. If you yell at a problem loud enough, it just might fix itself. Maybe. Thanks for watching! I've been working on this thing for three months now, and I've been writing it for like two years if you'd believe it, so I really really hope you enjoyed it. Before you go, I have a few special thanks I'd like to roll out. Thank you to Hooksy for the absolutely incredible thumbnail art. You can find them on Twitter as at HooksyDev. Go check them out, they're super cool. Also thanks to my very 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 good friend Dante for the beautiful ending artwork. You can also find them on Twitter as at underscore call me Dante. Go check them out too. Thanks to Sonikai on Twitter for some really really great writing help. He makes cool games, go check him out. Special thanks to Tails Channel for some sources and statistics, also on Twitter as at Tails Channel, though if you're a Sonic fan you probably already follow them. And finally, thank you so much for watching. I, I think I said that once already, whatever. Thank you so much, it really means a lot. And hey, if you want more of me for some reason, I also have a Twitter, at OmegaWatt. I post art there, like, occasionally. It's great. Alright, that's everything I wanted to say, I think. Now if you'll excuse me, I am now going to go sleep, go outside, and stay off social medias for the next week to avoid Sonic 2 spoilers. See ya!